Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Sunday School. And here we are for some more songs. But before we start, let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Bless us with Lord for everyone who's able to come and, and watch this Sunday School lesson. I pray, Lord, that you're able to be with us, to be able to learn something, to be able to hear your word being preached. Be with us as we sing these songs and let us sing it with all our heart to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our first song for today is Wide, Wide as the Ocean. So if you please get up, stretch your arms up. I'm sure it's the morning, so you guys just woke up. So let's get started. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to count to three. Three, two, one. Wide, wide as the ocean, high as the heavens above. Deep, deep as the deepest sea is my Savior's love. I know so unworthy, still am a child of His care. For His Word teaches me and His love reaches me everywhere. Where? Everywhere. Good job, everyone. And our second song for today is Rolled Away. I know you guys love that one. All right, on the count of three, Rolled Away. One, two, three. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away, every sin has to go, meet the cribs and flow, hallelujah, rolled away, rolled away, rolled away, every burden of my heart rolled away. Was that fast enough? Faster? Alright, we can go faster, alright? Let's go faster. Let's go. Three, two, one. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart roll the way. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart roll the way. Every sin has to go. Make the crimson flow. Hallelujah. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart roll the way. Faster? Supersonic speed? All right, supersonic speed. Let's go. Three, two, one. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart roll the way. Roll the way, roll the way, roll the way. Every burden of my heart roll the way. Every sin to go. Every tears and flowers. Every burden of my heart roll the way. Ah, thank you. That was good. That was good. I think we'll hand it over to our lesson today. So I hope you guys enjoy. Alrighty, good morning boys and girls. I hope you're ready for an incredible lesson today. I hope you've all had a great week as well. What did you guys get up to this morning before watching? You want to know what I did? I cooked up a feast. I cooked up so much food and I ate so much that now I feel like my belly is about to explode. Uh, I had so much I'm probably going to skip lunch today, but that's alright. Breakfast is always good to eat, okay? Now, we're going to be learning about a man. Now, this man built a big boat. And I think you guys know who it is now. This man, his name was Noah. But our focus isn't going to be on the story of Noah. Our focus is going to be on the lesson taught by the story of Noah. What does that mean? Well, um, we'll, we'll get on that in a little bit. Let's, let's have a word of prayer first, and then I'll start expanding on our points, okay? So let's bow our heads, and we'll close our eyes. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for who you are. Thank you, God, that you are forgiving, that you are almighty, Lord. That, Lord God, you provide for us everything that we could need. And I pray, Lord God, that you just be with everyone as they listen to the lesson this morning. Let them learn from it, but let them make the choice they need to make. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so Noah's Ark. You guys know the story. There was a man called Noah, and Noah built a big boat called an ark. And he took all the animals on the ark with him. The floods came and he survived the ark. But we're not going to focus on just the story. I want to focus on three different points when it comes to this story, okay? Now, they're big words. I want you guys to try your best to remember them. The first word is the word judgment. Can you guys remember that? Judgment. After judgment, the second word we're going to focus on is this word, redemption. 
redemption. We'll, we'll talk about what that means in a second. And then the third word is salvation. Salvation. Now, there are three things that occur during the story of Noah. So let's focus on the first point, judgment. God looked across all the world and he saw the wickedness of man. He saw that every single human being was a sinner, corrupted, they were filthy. God can't deal with sin. It's like a poison to him. He looks at sin and he just wants to get rid of it. So he decided that he was going to judge the whole world. And he was going to put an end to mankind by a flood. Now, what does that have to do with us today? Well, the Bible teaches us that we are all sinners. Every single one of us. We've all done something that we aren't supposed to have done according to the Bible. We've either told a lie. We've either taken something that didn't belong to us. We didn't listen to our mum and dad. We said some words that we shouldn't have said. And the list goes on and on and on. The Bible tells us the wages of these sins are death. So God looked at all the world way back when Noah was still around and he saw sin. So he said the thing that these people deserve is death. Judgment. Now, what's judgment mean? Um, sometimes you guys might find yourself uh, wondering what it could mean. But let me give you a little bit of a story about what judgment is. Imagine you're in a court case and there's a big man sitting on a high up chair and he holds a hammer. And you might see him, he goes boom, 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 boom. Order! Order in the court! That man is the judge. And his job is to decide what has gone right and what has gone wrong. Now, in our story, let's pretend that God is the judge. And he's sitting on this big chair and he's looking at you and what you've done in your life. And he adds up all the wrong things that you've done. And he says, well, the only thing that you deserve because of all the wrong things you've done is death. That's his judgment. That's what he decides. Boom. That's it. Nothing more you can say. Nothing more you can do. When that judge decides his judgment, it's over. That's it. Do you remember the second word we spoke about? The second word it began with an R. Was it rice? No, no, I think it was rice. Was a uh, oh redemption. Redemption. What does that word mean? Well, God looked at all the world and he saw one man. One man that he thought, he's worthy of saving. He's worthy of saving, but it's not for free. For Noah, it wasn't for free. Do you guys know what Noah had to do? That's right, he had to build a big boat called an ark. Do you guys know how long it took him to build an ark? It wasn't easy, that's for sure. It took him 120 years years. Do you know how long that is? I'm looking around in the room I'm in now and I see Mr. Lowell, I see Mr. Lawrence, I see Mrs. Haddad and there's myself. If you add all these ages together, guess what? It's still not 120 years. Still not. Isn't that crazy to think about? How long would 120 years be? If you look at your mum and your dad and your brothers and your sisters sitting in the room with you now, and you added all those ages together, you still wouldn't get to 120 years. That's how long it took Noah to build this ark. He took as long as what most of us will ever live on this earth, and then some, to finally build this giant monstrosity, this giant boat, built an ark, or called an ark. Right? It took him 120 years. Why did it take him that long? Because he had to show faithfulness to God. God told him that the earth will flood. And back in those days, it didn't even rain, let alone flood. How was Noah supposed to believe that the earth was going to flood? How was he? he? There was no reason to believe it. None whatsoever. But God told him so. And he told him exactly what he needed to do. So every day for the next 120 years, Noah didn't have Christmas. 
He didn't have Easter, school holidays, none of those things. He worked every single day building this ark in order to get redemption. And what did that redemption lead to? The boat was finished. The ark was done. Noah climbed into the ark. He sat in there. The animals came in. He sat there with his sons and his son's wives and his wife. And the whole family is there sitting and they're waiting. And waiting. And waiting. It's not raining yet. There are no floods. They sleep. They wake up the next day. Nope. No floods. They sleep. They wake up the next day. Still no flood. Do you know how long they sat and waited in the boat for? Two months. The Bible tells us two months. They sat and they waited in this boat. Before. Drop. 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 Drop, 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 drop. It started pouring and the Bible tells us that the rain from heaven fell down and the waters of the great deep opened up and the world flooded. Not just a part of the world, the entire world was covered by water. The entire world. And you think to yourself, man, that's, that, that's insane to think about. How could that happen? Because God willed it to happen. God wanted it to happen that way. Um, do you remember the third word we spoke about before? We had judgment. God looked at the world and he saw it was wicked. So he cast his judgment on the world. We had redemption. God saw Noah and that he was worthy of being saved. Noah had to work hard for his redemption. That third word was salvation. Noah, as a result of his hard work, was saved. Saved from the punishment. Saved from that death that every single human deserved, Noah and his family were saved from it through the ark. Now, I'm going to go back to the word redemption for a little while because there's a way that we can get redemption too. And it's a lot easier for us than it was for Noah. No, you don't need to spend 120 years building a boat. You don't need to do that. No, -uh. thankfully, God created a way. For us to get our redemption without having to work for it. How good is that? You know what God did? God created that way by sending Jesus to this earth to live his life with us. To face the same temptations. You know, the, he faced what we go through. He, he faced times where he would have felt angry. But he didn't do any sin. He didn't do anything wrong. And Jesus lived his life perfectly without sin, but he still died. He took that punishment of death as that sacrifice for us. So all we need to do to earn our redemption is to ask for forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ's death on the cross. And when we've done that, we earn, or we, we get, we don't earn, we haven't worked for it, but we receive for free, the gift of salvation. We receive the gift of salvation. That salvation means we're saved. We no longer suffer the consequences of our sin. We are saved from those consequences and we are made redeemed through Jesus Christ and we can spend an eternity in heaven with him. It's a, it's a lovely little story. Noah's Ark, the story of being judged redeemed and saved is something that we can learn from today and thank god we don't need to work to build an ark for 120 years because none of us would ever finish it none of us thank god that he thank god that he created a way for us to earn or to receive our salvation through jesus christ all right let's close in a word of prayer then after that i'm going to hand it over to mrs haddad for our uh, our bible verse ready let's bow our heads and close our eyes Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you again for that gift that is salvation, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for the uh, sacrifice you made on the cross through Jesus Christ, Lord, and that we can receive our salvation without having to work for it, Lord. It's a gift given by you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you, Amores. You know what, guys? That makes me think of the verse, Acts 
412. Do you all remember the song, Acts 412? Let's read it together. It says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And just like I've always said, how was Noah saved? He was saved by following God. He was saved by the ark. Could Noah save himself? No. Can we save ourselves? No. God made one way for Noah, and that was through the ark. And God made one way for us to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. Let's read this verse one more time. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Where does that come from? Aha, uh -huh, it comes from Acts 412. Let's get B1 and B2 up here and we're going to sing our Acts 412 song. Are we ready? What? Can you count us in, Mr. Lulu? One, two, three. Be it known unto you, everyone, everywhere. Jesus is the only name whereby we must be saved. Be it known unto you, everyone, everywhere. Jesus is the only name whereby we must be saved. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Where did we find that verse again? Acts 4.12. Oh, where did that answer? Right, Acts 4.12. So if you want to get your Bibles, you can open up your Bibles. Where will you open it up to? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts chapter 4 and 1, 2, 3. Read it in Acts 4.12, Acts 4.12, Acts 4.12. Jesus is the only name whereby we must be saved. Read it in Acts 4, 12, Acts 4, 12, Acts 4, 12. Jesus is the only name whereby we must be saved. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Very good. Now make sure you go home and you read it in Acts 4, 12 when you do the story. And let's do some more singing or crafts. Well, hello everyone. This is today's craft. And as you can see, they've gotten out of the ark and now they're eating their grass. I'm not sure what the lions are going to eat now, but anyway, they've gotten out of the ark now. And here's the rainbow, which is the promise that God will never flood the earth again. And yeah, that's about it. You can't see the window here, so maybe it's on the other side of the ark. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your colouring in sheet. Now we'll have some more singing. All right, thank you, Uncle James, and thank you, Mr. Wes, and thank you, Natasha, Miss, Mrs. Natasha and Mrs. Haddad, uh, for the lesson and for the memory verse. And now we'll sing one more song to end, and this will be Christ Returneth. All right. If you guys don't know this song, just read along the words and uh, hopefully you can learn this song. All right, let's let's sing in the count of three. Can you count to three, please, Mr. Lawrence? One, two, three. It may be at morn when the day is awaiting, when sunshine through darkness and shadow is breaking, when Jesus will come in the fullness of glory. From the world is own. Oh Lord Jesus, how long, how long can we shout that glad song? Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. It may be at midday, it may be at twilight. It may be perchance that the blackness of midnight will burst into light in the blaze of His glory when Jesus receives His own. Oh Lord Jesus, how long, how long ere we shall burn? 
glad song. Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. Thank you. Um, now we'll end it over for the proper play, and I hope you guys enjoy. See you next week. Succession. Will the prosecutor pronounce his case? Most gladly, Your Honour. The accused was found in a break and enter. He slyly, schemingly, and surreptuously stole the The very harshest of penalties. <laughs> Mr. Police Dog, is that true? Yes, Your Honour. I caught him in the very act. Mm, so it is true. It was my gold chain that he stole. Mm, very sad. Do you have anything to say for yourself, Wrinkles? <laughs> oh, I'm guilty. Oh, I'm guilty. I'm sorry, I knew it was wrong, I did, I did, but I did it anyway, I'm so sorry, and I'm so wicked, I never want to do it ever again. He's lying, your honour, he's a so rapturous liar, he just wants to get off. Oh, I don't know about that. He knows he's done wrong and wants to come clean, doesn't he? I'm so wicked and I'm so sorry. Okay, order. Order in the court. The law says that Mickey will be fined $5,000. I deserve it. But I don't have $5,000. But that's the law. The law must be upheld, or you shall be cast into prison. That's true. The law must be upheld. But, Mickey, you stole from me, and I forgive you. I will pay for your fine. You see, I'm a Christian, and I've done many horrible, wicked things, and I've sinned against my Lord and Saviour. But God forgave me, so I will do likewise and forgive you. You... You, you, you mean, you, you, you forgive me? You mean, you mean, uh, I'm, I'm free? Yes, you are free. I, I don't deserve it, but, oh, oh th thank you, oh, thank you, I'm free. Yes, no worries. Matter of fact, come and dine with me, and I'll tell you about forgiveness. Oh.